Hello everyone, welcome to day 21st of March Lead Code Challenge and today's question is the order power of 2. In this question you are given a positive integer n and we need to tell if we can reorder the digits uh, in the given number n and the resultant number is a power of 2 or not. If that is the case, we return true. If you can't generate a, a permutation of a given number as a power of 2, you have to return false. So I'll go into the examples in my presentation. So moving on to the presentation. So let me just add the slideshow. And I'm taking a pen here. Reorder power of 2, lead code 869. And let's understand the problem. The problem says you are given a number n. And if we can reorder the digits of the number so that it becomes a power of 2 and that can be any power of 2. If that is the case, then we need to return true. Otherwise, we need have to return false from it. The return type would be false. So let's take few examples here. Let's take this example first. So 182 is the given input number. And what are the permutations that can be generated of all the digits in 182? The first one is 1, 2, 8, 1, 8, 2, 2, 1, 8, 2, 8, 1 and next one would be 8, 2, 1 and 8, 1, 2. If any of these numbers is a power of 2, then we have to return false. Otherwise, we need to return, then we have to return true. Otherwise, we will have to return false, which in this case is 128. 128 is 2 raised to power 7. Uh, therefore, the answer would be true here. Let's take another case. 1. A simple case is 1. So, 1 itself is a power of 2. So, 2 raised to power 0 is 1. We need to return true. And next, we have 1042. One of the possible permutation is 1024, and which is power of uh, 10 again. So, we need to return true. So these are all the positive cases where we are returning true. The negative cases could be 47, um, 24. I can think of few negative cases here as well. So let's talk about the naive approach. The naive approach would be to generate all permutations of a given number. And for each number, we check whether it's a power of 2 or not. How will we check whether a number is a power of 2? So the process is very simple. Let's take 64 as an example. How will we check whether the number is a power of 2? We'll keep on dividing it by 2. Also, we'll keep a check whether the remainder uh, till the, my dividend doesn't become equal to 1 is 0 throughout the process. If that is the case, then my uh, number is a power of 2. Otherwise, it's not. So let's try this approach. So 64 by 2 is 32. Remainder is 0. We are good. Then we get 32 as well. Uh, so 32 by 2 is 16. Remainder is still 0. Then we get 16. Remainder is 0. Then we get 8. Remainder is 0. Then we get 4. Remainder is 0. Then we get 2. Remainder is 0. And uh, now we get 1. Uh, so in at the end, we check with, if the remainder is 1 and the dividend is also 1. That means uh, the uh, number is the power of 2. Otherwise, it's not possible. Let's take a negative case as well. Let's take 46 as an example. So 46 divided by 2 is 23. Remainder is 0. Continue. Then we uh, divide it by 2. Uh, then what we get? Uh, we get uh, 1, 12, 11. We get 11. Also, we observe that remainder is non-zero here and the dividend is 11. So that is not a good case. We have to avoid the process and return false for this permutation. So this is a slightly uh, time consuming process because you have generating all the permutations of a given number. And for each permutation, you're checking whether it, the number is a power of two or not. Uh, the, the time complexity would be n factorial into log n, n factorial for generating all the permutations and log in for checking whether a number is a power of 2 or not. Can we do something better about it? Yes, we can. Let's look at the second approach. So what we are going to do, we'll count the frequencies of each number that are present in the digit, in the input digit. For example, let's talk 46. 
so we have 46 and we'll count uh, that we will get to know that we have uh, 4 at uh, with the frequency 1 and 6 with the frequency 1 again so we'll create an array starting from 0 till 9 and everything else would be 0 here apart from 4 and 6 because the frequency of these digits is 1 and now what we'll do uh, we will uh, start from the first power of 2 so the first power of 2 is 2 and we'll, we'll generate the frequency array for this number and if this the frequency array for this number matches with the frequency array of the input number then there's a match and uh, we'll return true immediately from the process so for 2 what would be the frequency array the frequency array would be so at 2 we'll have 1 that's simple let's move so this doesn't match because here 2 is 0 and here the frequency of 2 is 1 let move, let's move on to the next element the next power of 2 so we will have 4 so this becomes 0 and we'll only have 1 uh, the frequency of 4 would be 1 so this also doesn't match because 6 the frequency of 6 is here 1 so let's move on to the next one we'll get 8 then we'll move on to 16 then we'll move on to uh, 32 and then we'll have 64 so at 64 the frequency will match because we'll have one here and that two at six again so since this matches we will return true immediately from the process i hope this approach is clear to you and this is quite an interesting approach on the lines of bucket sorting so let's quickly code this up so as a first step i'll write a method that returns me the frequency array so this would be an integer added return type would be an integer array and frequency count of digits so i'll pass the number n and i'll define an array of size and let me just call it digit count digit frequency new int size would be 10 because the digits lie from 0 till 10 and let's write while n is greater than 0 or let's increase the frequency of the last digit n modulus 10 plus plus so we uh, extracted the index uh, of the first digit in the uh, number starting from right to left and then we incremented it by 1 n equals to n by 10 divided the number by 10 and in the end simply return the digit frequency pretty simple way and let's calculate it for the input digit frequency equals to frec count and you pass in there and for integer i equals to 0 i is less than 31 i plus plus how many powers of 2 we are interested in generating 32 powers so let's generate a power of 2 number and that would be equal to math dot pow 2 comma i and the return type for this is double so let me just cast it into end and let's generate the frequency count for this number as well so I'll pass power of 2 here and this would be power of 2 frec count and now uh, we need to simply compare these two arrays so let's write a helper method for this private boolean compare array integer frec count 1 comma integer frequency frec count 2 and for let's take a boolean boolean match and let's define it to true for integer i equals to 0 i is less than 10 i plus plus 
if my frequency of ith index is not equal to my frequency count 2 of ith index that means it's not it's an unmatching case we'll simply return false from here otherwise let's return to you don't need this variable and let's call this for the input array frequency and power of 2 frequency count if this happens to be true if this returns true then my answer is true otherwise it's false nothing fancy about the code just a few modularized methods so that uh, we it, it makes us it makes it better readable accepted uh, thanks for watching the video and i hope you enjoyed it also please don't forget to like comment and share the video with your friends apart from this i'm coming up with the uh, cache design video today hope you'll enjoy that